you know, it's not that he spent a huge amount of time, you know, he was, he, he got blipped, so she didn't, you know, he didn't have, he didn't spend very long, you know, mourning her death before she, you know, before, he, in this he calls her past Gamora, which, that, that works. You know, he, yeah, he, he met past Gamora, and he's struggling to, he, it, it's, it's hard on him that she doesn't remember at all, or, does, you know, he remembers she didn't experience, you know, and Zoe Zaldana, I, I love that that this is apparently like you know she went by Zoe Saldana for a while for you know many many years, and you know the ah uh, crap I I don't know what it's called so but the the part over the N you know that's the the you know she's embracing more her original culture so love to see it, but yeah Zoe Saldana excellent as always and. Yeah, you know, this is this is the the Gamora that you know, yeah, she did turn on Thanos. The, you know, that that is apparent like there's there's probably if if Thanos like can see the multiverse, he must be super frustrated like what did I do? Come on, man. Every Gamora apparently turns on him. You know, the Gamora we were familiar with in the first two movies, who dies in Infinity War, you know, who's, yeah, he kills her in Infinity War. The, you know, this version that is in Endgame and here, and also that one that was in the, um, the, um, that, she, yeah, there was one that appeared in two episodes of What If, season one, like, Dude has no luck. He should probably just stop adopting Gamoras. It's not working out for him. But yeah, you know, she did briefly, she, she did turn on Thanos and help stop him. And yeah, now she's working with the Ravagers. And the Ravagers, you know, help the, the Guardians and... The, this brings Peter and Gamora back into, you know, yeah, and the, the, yeah, she's not a big fan either of, of this whole situation. And I don't know, but I feel like some of the, like, she's, I feel like James Gunn, in writing her, and I don't think, it's not like character assassination or anything, but the very specific way he wrote her almost feels like she was written as, like, someone who doesn't like the MCU movies, and and is forced to, to, to go along with, with some, so, so she's like, you know, she's, she's like super ruthless, and Peter is like, holy... Past Gamora is such a jerk, or some, something along those lines, you know. And, like, she not only doesn't understand Groot speech, but straight up, like, she's like, why does he keep saying his name? And, and at one point, she's like, you're all just pretending like what he's saying makes sense to you, right? Like, it's just, it's... I feel like James Gunn just said, it, it feels like one of the, the, just... Yeah, that was, that was very, very fun. I really appreciate it. And, and Zaldana goes for it. Like, we haven't seen Gamora be this awful in the MCU at all. Really? Yeah, cause this, yeah, she's she's just a complete. You know, you could really see you you can see the Thanos in her. You know, you can really see the the influence of him, 
in in her behavior and yeah it's it's really really fun and i really appreciate like you know you could understand if someone like zoe zaldania if she, all she took was like roles that made her look just like a, a perfect you know flawless being you know but yeah she takes this role where like she is really really awful like yeah Dave Batista as Drax the Destroyer and yeah the 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 um yes actually I will briefly say Batista stated that Volume 3 would be the final time he would portray Drax, having been grateful for the role while still calling it a relief to have concluded his time with the character given the long hours needed to get into makeup and hoping to pursue more dramatic acting roles. I think that's really great, because I... He can act. I, I would not, like, I... If you had asked me, like... Let's see, how far do we have to go back? Like, 15 years, maybe? some years back at this point but if you had asked me can wrestlers act like in movies like like can they can they play a character you know outside of just the the you know i'm not saying it's easy for for wrestle acting but it's different you know the the way that stage acting and film acting are different you know I, w I would not have thought, but yeah, he's really, really talented. So I'm I'm glad. I I I want to see him in other stuff. But yeah, he he does such a great job here. The the you know he's not he's he's sometimes more enthusiastic and like energetic and like he's got the go getter attitude more than he necessarily completely understands everything or can can like form a really complex plan or is it but you know a for effort honestly and Karen Gillan plays Nebula and let's see Gillen believed Nebula was developing into a slightly different person with more levity as she starts to heal psychologically following the death of Thanos, was the source of her abuse and torment. Let's see. Yeah, and, and Volume 3 fulfills a character arc for the character that James Gunn envisioned when starting to work on the first one. And yeah, you know, she. You know, she used to be very much like, you know, eventually she begrudgingly started to help the good guys. But now she actually, like, you know, in, in, yeah, in some of, you know, as she gradually started to, she, sometimes she would just, like, wait around for, like, in, in volume two, she's very, you know, she's she's basically just waiting for a chance to get out of her chains, and then she shoots Yondu and gets the, you know, gets all this stuff from the Ravagers and this whole thing, you know. And yeah, sometimes she would more or less just stand around, or if, if there was something she could do, she would do it. Here, she's really quite proactive. Like, she, she is 100% you know she's she's down for it she's she's uh, yeah palm clementief plays mantis and you know she she sometimes finds the others frustrating which you know eventually she had to like she she was very very patient with them for for a while and now, like some of the time, it's just like, come on, guys, this is this is you know, and it's it's very very fun to see her, you know, being as, you know, yeah, making making jokes at Drax's expense also, and 
yeah, Vin Diesel as Groot, and yeah, this is the version some people refer to as Swole Groot, and yeah, you know, there's not, I, I don't really have a lot to say about Groot, he's, he's fun, as always, and Bradley Cooper as Rocket, and this episode, this entry, really goes into what the, you know, we see his origin story, and we really come to understand how he ended up the way, you know, we, we've seen him fully formed. When we met him in the first movie, he was fully formed. He was an adult, and, and we saw how bitter and resentful he is of basically everyone. Like, he, you know, it doesn't make him happy to see a happy baby. It doesn't make him happy to see an old man talking to a woman. You know, everything he, you know, everything he sees pisses him off. And, yeah, here we see why. We, we really, you know, we have, we've gotten hints. We, we had some knowledge, but here it's really spelled out, and, yeah. Um, is he the one who, um, let's see, um, someone does a, um, hmm. Right, okay, so, yeah, Sean Gunn does, oh, yeah, Sean Gunn does, voices Young Rocket, and Noah Raskin voices Baby Rocket, and, yeah, absolutely amazing, like, yeah, and, and, yeah, so much emotion in the, just, yeah. And the film completes a character arc that was established in Volume 1. And Will Poulter plays Adam Warlock. And, let's see... Yeah, given Warlock is newly born from the Sovereign's cocoon, he is basically a baby that does not understand life very well. And Gunn thought Warlock's interactions with the Guardians provide an interest, interesting juxtaposition to what their journey has been. Described him as a more traditional superhero compared to the Guardians, although not necessarily a hero. And yeah, he does really, really great. Um, Poulter, I don't, I don't think I've seen him in anything. I, I know that this is not like the very first thing he's ever done. Um, I've seen, like, clips, it seems like he's funny in Where the Millers, for example, um, some people were very frustrated by his character in Midsommar, um, yeah, he was in the Maze Runner movies, yeah, yeah, haven't seen him in the Chronicles, of Narnia also, but yeah, this is the first thing I see him in, um, I hope to see him in more, he's, he's really, really good, I really appreciate that they cast someone, like, you know, if you look at the comics, you know, he's one of the many, many just idealized uh, drawings, uh, you know, I love comic books, I do think sometimes the, 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 tendency to draw these kind of idealized versions of men and women, I don't think that's the strongest suit. I've always preferred the ones that were allowed to look a little bit more, like, unusual, a little bit less, yeah, less idealized. I, I think it's really cool to, to cast someone with such a distinct look as, as Will Poulter as a character, like, if you just Google, you know, he, he just looks like the perfect man, it's, you know, physically, in, in the comics, so, yeah, and, and he gives a really good performance, like, 
you know, he, he can handle the, the physicality, which is, I think this might be the first time he does this kind of physical, you know, like a superhero thing, the, the superhuman thing. And he's also, he does the, the, you know, yeah, apparent, as far as I can tell, he came from, like, com a comedy background, so it's not really a surprise, but it's still nice to see, yeah, he is really, really funny. Like, there are, there, there, yeah, basically, like, ongoing thing of, like, yeah, he doesn't really, he doesn't completely understand, like, he has a, he has a fine command of, of English, but... He doesn't really understand, like, you know, there's, um, if you tell him to do something, you gotta be very specific. You can't, like, you know, if you, if you just make, like, oh, let's, you know, let's let them know we're serious. That might not be the best phrasing, because he's not gonna appreciate the, the, there's a, there's a distinction there. I'll let you find out in the movie itself, but, but, yeah, very, very funny, and, like, he, he gets really attached to this, like, cute animal thing that, like, you know, Aisha is essentially his mother, you know, um, not, like, literally, you know, because he came out of Cocoon, but she, she acts as a mother, she is she is an adoptive mother, sort of, to him, and like she is trying to make sure that he behaves himself, and you know we got to make a good impression on the, the high evolutionary who made both of us, and he's you know, and and he's like no, but I like I I like this little pet thing. Can I can I keep it, please? It's, yeah, very, very funny, and yeah, I already mentioned Elizabeth Debicki, you know, she's still great, this this is kind of a waste of her time, and I feel bad for her, but, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, because of roles like this, maybe it helps raise her profile, and that's how she gets roles, like, in Widows and, and Tenet, which, by the way, if you haven't watched... Like, they're not for everyone, those movies, but for sure, it's worth at least giving a chance. You know, if, if, the, if the central concept, you know, of, of those movies, you know, sound, sound good to you. And, and, you know, if you're, like, kind of burnt out on Christopher Nolan before Tenet, skip Tenet, because it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna be, like, it's gonna be exhausting if you're, if you're burned out on him, uh, you know, I love it, I wasn't burned out, I am not burned out, cannot wait for Oppenheimer, now, so yes, Stallone is in this, but he does not have a lot of screen time, I mean, there's so many other characters, and he got, you know, James Gunn got great acting and great material out, you know, and yeah, direct, wrote great material for him for volume two, so, you know, I've, if, if this, if this was the only time he appeared in one of these movies, I'd be like, why did you get someone who can deliver like Stallone can and give him nothing, but volume two, he's got great material, you know, so, yeah. I, I think he's in this basically just to, uh, uh, you know, him and his team from the, one of the post credit you know, one of the 25 post credit scenes of Volume 2 do make an, you know, a brief appearance. They're not in a, a lot of, honestly, I don't know if, I mean, I could see they could, Would a Disney Plus show maybe be interesting? Like you could do like a every every week they have a new mission kind of thing, like like Star Wars Rebels maybe. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, that brings us to Maria. Oh, oh hold on, Sean Gunn as Craglin Obfontary, and he continues to be great. Like he's 
you know, you have the thing of him, like, he wants, he wants people to respect him, he wants to be cool and smooth, but he's just not necessarily the most impressive, so he gets very, very excited and very, you know, he, he does not like it when people don't think he's the hottest thing since sliced bread, so, yeah, it's... Uh, you know, they, they do a really great job of, like, like at times we're, like, kind of, oh, honey, you know. But at the same time, it also, we also do feel, you know, and, and sometimes we laugh. So it's just, yeah, really, really well done. And that brings us to Maria Bakalova, who was apparently amazing in the second, I can't believe I'm blanking on that. I'll, I'll have it momentarily. The second Borat movie. I haven't watched either of those. I don't really have a, a problem with the, the movies. I just haven't watched them. I, I do like um, Sasha Baron Cohen. I, I think his, you know, I've watched some of his Ali G stuff. I found that pretty funny. Uh, you know, I think he does an amazing job in the Tim Burton I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. The the Demon Barber. Yeah, that one, you know. But yeah, Maria Bakalova plays Cosmo the Space Dog. And let's see. Oh, right, and in addition to voice acting, she actually provided motion capture for the character, which must have been adorable. Let's see. And yeah, in the in the holiday special and the first two movies, uh, the the physical portrayal was dog actors, Fred and Slate. But yeah, the you know, Cosmo is a member of the Guardians, who is a sapient dog that developed psionic abilities after being sent into space by the Soviet Union. Gunn changed Cosmo's gender from male, as depicted in the comics, to female for the film, as a tribute to the character's original ex inspiration, Laika, a Soviet space dog who became one of the first animals to go into space, not one to return, sadly. Um, I don't want to say that Cosmo is sensitive I um I'm just saying if hypothetically someone felt that she was not and I'm not saying I'm I'm, I'm not saying I'm saying it I'm just saying if hypothetically if someone felt that Cosmo was not a good dog they should probably be very careful about you know cuz cuz she has feelings, you know? And I found that to be a very, very funny running gag that she does not want people to think she's a bad dog. And Chukwudi Iwuji plays the high evolutionary and, like, holy crap! Um... He's really, really good. At, he he makes this character like is also old. It's also there in the writing, but like this is a truly awful character. Like he, um, not awfully written, but like he's despicable. Like you, just you, you absolutely cannot stand this guy. You can't wait to see him get his comeuppance. You know. And, yeah, like, he absolutely sells it. Like, I have to wonder, I haven't really seen, like, interviews, but I could imagine it's one of those where, like, in interview, he, he might be, like, super chill and, and, like, polite and such to, you know, so that people realize, no, 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 I, that's, that's just the character, that's, a, that's, an, that's an acting performance, that's not me, because, like, holy crap, but, yeah. He is a scientist specializing in evolution, Rocket's creator who seeks to forcibly enhance all living beings into a special race. So, yeah. 
you know, it's, it's not that, like, you don't, not every villain has to be, like, a eugenicist and a, and a Nazi, but considering that, like, here in the West, fascism is back on the rise, yeah, it's, it's really good to, you know, th this is one of those where, like, there's probably going to be people watching in theaters and, like, going, um, is that where I'm headed, where, where we're headed, this, this group of, of people, because, oh boy, um, I think we need to, I think we need to rethink things, this is, um, yeah, we, 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 uh, 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 back to formula, Iwuji described the character as narcissistic, sociopathic, but very charming, adding that there was something very Shakespearean about him. There's something very emotionally dark about him, and he's a lot of fun on top of all of that. Let, you know, sometimes when you act, absolutely hate a villain, you know, sometimes it gets to be exhausting, or it's like not fun, or you just want the character to stop being in the movie. That's not the case here. Like, he, he is so much fun to hate. And you just, you, you sit there just, you know, come on, get, get him, get him. Just, so, yeah. And, like, really, the, the performance, like, this so easily could be, you know, just exhausting. And, and Iwuji does an amazing job. And, let's see. Yeah. Daniela Melchior, who James Gunn also directed in The Suicide Squad, appears in this, and yeah, she's she's very very fun. Like it's a it's a small role, but very very fun, very just and and completely different from Ratcatcher too. And let's see. Yeah, Nico Santos, guess in the undisclosed role. And yeah, this this features the the character of Lila. And I'm I'm not gonna give a, anything away. I'm just gonna say just yeah, she's she's you really get to to care about this character. And she's voiced by Linda Cardellini, who was already in the MCU and not like way back. Like she she appeared in the the Hawkeye miniseries, which was 2021. So But yeah, you know, they're doing this now. They're they're giving you know, some some actors appear more than once in in the MCU, and I'm absolutely here for it. Um, you know, in addition to her, we also had in in Eternals, uh, Gemma Chan, who had also appeared in the um, the the Captain Marvel movie. You know, so it's yeah, it's a it's a thing. There are a couple of of people who play multiple roles, I, I'm really, really glad, like, it's just, she, she gives a really, really strong performance. And that brings us to, so yeah, the, the dialogue is great as usual, and let's see, so the cinematography, right, the, the DP is Henry Braham who, uh, let's see, right, he also DP'd the, the Flash, they're making another Roadhouse, okay, and let's see, yeah, the, the Holiday Special, The Suicide Squad, Volume 2, so yeah, you know, he's, he's been working with, <coughs> with gun on these kinds of things and yeah 
you know, just amazing, amazing cinematography. Really, it it feels like a comic book come to life. The editing is handled by Greg Doria and Fred Raskin. And let's see, Doria has also worked on other gun things and yeah both of them have edited other gun things and and yeah again to do a really excellent job and the special effects are amazing this is you know there there was a um, recently there's been some criticism of uh, the MCU and and certainly you know the the they apparently they don't treat the effects people all that well and that is definitely something that needs to change I don't personally feel like the effects have gotten that bad but some people really really hate it in, in some of these this one I don't think people are gonna be, there's a there's a, there's a little bit that but but by and large you know the the CG is photorealistic and they go for like when when they can they go for a the uh, uh, practical effects and uh is that hold on um Filming locations, yeah, it says Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, and London, England. Um, that's as specific as it gets. Now...